Today on the Monday Mindset, we're going to talk about having a daily perspective for God. Mm -hmm. And this is my awesome wife, Fran. She has many, many <laughs> amazing qualities. And one of them, obviously, she has great taste in men. That's, That's something right. I tell her all the time. But um, <laughs> we're happy to share this with you. Thank you. Are you one of those people that is always positive, always happy, always faithful, even when you're going through problems? Is that naturally you? Well, if it is, I'd like to meet you. I'm not naturally like that. <laughs> and the reason I mentioned that is earlier this week, a good friend of mine, John, was commenting to me. We were praying, Steve, I feel like you're always, I think the words you used was happy. And I thought to myself and I told John, that is naturally not who I am. In fact, naturally, I beat up myself and I can look at what I've done wrong and I'm not happy naturally. So I've learned two habits over my life that have really made all the difference in the world. I want to talk to you about that. It's having perspective and believe it or not, it's just not a one-time thing. You got to have it daily. So that's what I'm going to share about today. So, um, I thought of a really interesting perspective when I was reading John chapter 11. So the setting is Jesus is friends with Martha and Mary and their brother Lazarus. And Jesus finds out that his good friend Lazarus is sick. So he waits to go see him. And it's interesting Jesus's perspective in 11, um, John 11 verse four, when he heard this, the one you loved sick, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. Notice for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. And I love how it says the sickness will not end in death. Actually, death was involved. It's just not the end. And a lot of times we think it's the end of things, be it death or whatever situation you're in. But really, we're just part way through it. That was Jesus's perspective. Mm -hmm that this will not end in death. Let's read on a little bit further. And I encourage you to read this whole chapter, it's amazing. In verse 11, after he has said this, Jesus went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. So from the human perspective, from these people's perspective, Lazarus is dead. Jesus, it said he'd fallen asleep. Of course, there's an amazing chapter, 1 Corinthians 15. I love that chapter. Read that chapter. It's very inspiring. And then um, probably my favorite part of this whole passage is verse 25. Jesus is speaking to Martha and Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? That is such a powerful question. Do you believe this? Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And that has a lot of meaning to us, both when we die but even now. And I thought, um, I thought, is there another example of somebody who kind of got this and I saw really live this? And I thought of Paul in Philippians. That's one of my go-to um, books whenever I'm kind of a little bit down and my mindset's not exactly right. So I love the wording of this in Philippians chapter one, verse 12. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. Notice that language, what's happened to me. You know, when things happen to other people, I, I do feel some things, but what happens to me, I really feel it. And I think we're all naturally that way. You know, and what things have been happening to you in your life? Maybe you're going through some intense times. Um, I was 
a couple weeks ago, hurt my back. That's kind of my weak link. And so me being the smart guy I am, I was shoveling snow Thursday, just about at the end. And oh my gosh. So um, I hurt my back again really bad and you know, kind of crawling around the house and a lot of pain. Um, but, you know, stuff happens to you, you feel it. So this perspective, I especially need it when I'm going through a difficult time. And it's interesting. So he says his perspective, though, is that it actually has helped advance the gospel. Mm -hmm. And in verse 13, as a result, it's become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else, I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become more confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. So that was his perspective. Yes. Like, wow, some good stuff came out of this. Yeah. And I love down, um, the whole chapter is amazing, but in verse 21, he summarizes, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Mm -hmm. And what a great perspective. Same thing Jesus is talking about, our perspective matters. And, you know, this idea of um, back in verse 12, what happened to me, one thing that helps me whenever I'm going through some challenge, like when I have pain in my life, honestly, I kind of naturally start praying about and thinking about other people that are going through a lot more. Mm -hmm. I think of Lewis and Mary. They're yeah. such an inspiration to me. They live in pain with a lot of their life, but they're still joyful and giving. Mm -hmm. I think about Kurt and, and Amelia, just their faithfulness in spite of going through a much bigger challenge. And that inspires me. So thank you, Kurt, for what you're doing. And thank you, Amelia. And um, Frank, talk to us about, about your perspective on, on perspective. So I think what helps me with my daily perspective is I have to think about what God has done in my life in the past and thinking about who God is. And there's a lot of times that you know, I can look back clearly and remember that, you know, there were maybe hard times or doubtful times or faithless times or wondering what are we supposed to do in this situation and just crying out to God, you know, my eyes are on you, God, you know, show us what to do. And I think remembering all the times that God came through or guided or you can always look back and see where God was working and his providence and that gives me hope for today especially in these days like everybody is and days of uncertainty uh gives me hope and peace uh, that i can trust god because of what i've already seen him do not just in my life but in other people's lives and similarly moses uh, in deuteronomy chapter 4 he's reminding the people of who god is and what he had done in their lives. And I want to read verses 32, De Deuteronomy 4, 32 through 35. Ask now about the former days, long before your time, from the day God created human beings on the earth. Ask from one end of the heavens to the other. Has anything so great as this ever happened, or has anything like it ever been heard of? Has any other people heard the voice of God, speaking out of fire as you have and live? Has any God ever tried to take for himself one nation out of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, or by great and awesome deeds, like all the things the Lord your God did for you before your very eyes? You were shown these things so that you might know that the Lord is God. Besides him, there is no other. And that helps me with my daily perspective uh, choosing to remember god has been faithful god has been there and even though we still have days where we're thinking okay what do we do in this situation or what's this going to turn out like i have to remember who god is and what he has done and that gives me hope um, and i'm going to read uh, scripture in psalm 27 Verses 13 through 14. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. And I think this is 
from somebody that also going through hard times, but you can see that I'm going to wait for, for God. God is working. He will come through. He will guide us. He will, however he chooses to work, God will be there because that is who God is. I like what you said, Fran, just that kind of when you go through the challenges and you trust in God, it kind of builds up your faith muscle. Yeah. So, hey, I've been through this before. God has been faithful and he'll be faithful again. Mm -hmm. So that, that can be part of that Romans 8, God works all things for good. He's going to kind of, in a sense, toughen us up so we're not yeah. so soft. Mm -hmm. Builds yeah. hope. Yeah, exactly. So um, I'd love to tell you that I got this perspective and just got it done and I'm all done and I don't ever struggle with it. Um, I am not that guy. It, that's where the daily part comes in. I love in Matthew 6, 11, where Jesus talked about the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Mm -hmm. And in Exodus chapter 16, where he tells the Israelites to go out and gather enough for just that day. Mm -hmm. and I, I think God is so, God's so wise, obviously, but he knows that we need him every day. Yeah. And I tell you, I know I need God every day. So every day I need to go pray, especially prayers of gratitude. Mm -hmm. If I'm having a rough day, if I'm having one of those, what has happened to me days, yeah. um, mm -hmm. I tell you that contrast, that perspective makes yeah. a difference. You know, you know, we've taken some financial hits, but you know what? We have, we have a place to live. Yeah. We have food and water. Really, that's not in doubt. And so just remembering that, wow, there are people that don't have that. Yeah. That helps me to remember how good I have yes. it. And so I want to encourage you, have a perspective. What is your perspective? Is it that God is working in your life? How is God working? How can I trust God with all my heart and lean out of my own understanding? And I have to go back daily. What is your plan for going daily? It makes all the difference in the world. So I hope you have a daily perspective for God. Thank you. Thank you.